This weekend there's an international comic book festival in Stockholm. That sounds properly geeky, doesn't it? Let's check it out. There's a lot of different stuff at the festival. A comic book market and also lectures of various kinds. You're doing something called Literally Painted. How did you come up with that idea? Well, I wanted a project that I can paint something every week. And then I found out that I really like puns and wordplays, so I wanted to illustrate them. So then I put them up on Instagram and people started sending me like, oh, have you painted this word? And then it just grew. So this is some of my paintings. Do you have any favorites? I think it's like uh, my ice cream bird, last roots. <laughs> Creatures of Gothenburg, what's this all about? Well, it's my urban fantasy webcomic that I draw on Instagram. And this is the first time I'm at a festival with it. Uh, so I printed it. And now I'm just trying to get people to notice it. It's about a robot who uh, works at a car factory. And then he wakes up, becomes sentient and tries to figure out life in a wacky alternate universe of Gothenburg. Sounds like the normal Gothenburg. Yeah, I, I draw a lot of inspiration from real life. The Phantom, he's purple in the US, but blue in Sweden. Why is that? Yeah, I mean, that's, that's a really good question. And except for, for Sweden or the Nordics, where he's blue, he's red in some countries as well. But in Sweden, like if you look at the early productions, you can see that he varies a lot. Like he's blue in some and red in some and purple in some of the covers, but then it ends up with blue. They couldn't get the colors correct. They tried to mix it, but it came out blue instead of purple. You mentioned that there's a story behind the purple color as well in the US. Yeah, so Lee Falk, he says that he imagined the, the phantom as uh, gray because he called him the gray ghost and the story is that he was on vacation when the first sunday came out where he was in color and they use purple because that looks much better towards the green in in the jungle and he says oh i that wasn't my intent but maybe it was maybe it's just a story you have a printer make cannibalism cool again did it ever really go out of style? Never. Cannibalism is never out of style. How come you draw all of these gruesome stuff? I just draw what I like. <laughs> so it's, <laughs> so it, it's a matter of preference. I don't think they're very gruesome. I just think they're pretty. You're the writer of these stories. Which is your favorite story out of all of these? Oh my gosh, well that's like picking a favorite child. It's impossible to do, but um, every day it probably changes. Um, sometimes I write uh, for superheroes or for licensed things and that's really fun. You know, you have like a, a, a sort of parameter that you have to work in, but um, you can have fun within that playground. So I'm gonna say, because it's here, I'm gonna say Female Furies, which is um, Big Barda and um, the Female Furies in Jack Kirby's New Gods, but it's the Me Too movement on Apocalypse, so that was really fun. And then for um, for my creator-owned, it's the Plain Janes, which is about an all-girl guerrilla art group that does Banksy-style art attacks. What would you say is most important, getting a good story or getting a good message across? Well, I think if you write a good story, then a good message um, is in there because hopefully you have like some kind of um, theme that you're that you're working towards. Like for Plain Janes, which is about the art activist, for me it was um, art saves. That like when we're in our deepest despair, that the thing that can save us, the thing that can give us voice when we don't have voice anymore, is art. And for Female Furies, it was like how do we how do we fight the patriarchy, you know, and um, and how do we like address sort of social injustice um, when it comes to misogyny and, um, you know, anti-feminist things. So it was really great to, you know, when you write a story, I think the message comes through there. Here we have the Swedish Disney fan club. Interesting. I never knew about it. But apparently some people really like Donald Duck. Herman Hedning is possibly Sweden's best comic book character, or at least one of the most recognizable. Genshin Impact is everywhere, even at a comic book festival. I love it. But they didn't have any Ayaka, so no, I'm not gonna buy anything. 
Now we're getting into things I recognize, Secret Wars and Weapon X. I hope they're gonna do a Marvel Secret Wars movie one of these days. I would love to see that. 12 year old me would have been ecstatic at that. And uh, well, old me is also ecstatic. I love this sign. The artist isn't here because he couldn't afford a train ticket. That's uh, the tragic life of a comic book artist. It seems like the Comic Book Academy in Malmö are giving away the yearbook. Hmm, very interesting. I'd love to say that there's a great mix of old and young people here, but in all honesty, it's not that many youngsters. Maybe comic books just isn't as appealing to the younger generations. Or maybe it's just a little bit too much not safe for work material here. I wonder if I'm gonna have to censor that picture. <laughs> what kind of comics are you selling here? A little bit of everything. We have commercial stuff like Walking Dead and Calvin and Hobbes and uh, the Swedish... Not the, actually it's Danish. The Danish uh, Viking saga Valhall. Uh, Kim W. Anderson's books, um, so a little bit of everything. <laughs> How come you got started in this business? I worked for a bigger company and uh, I wanted them to do Walking Dead and they didn't want that, so I started apart. You're drawing a lot of adorable dinosaurs. Why dinosaurs? Because they are very cute, especially when they are in a, a costume for little babies. <laughs> Everything is cute in costume, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I might do more than just dinosaurs in the future. What's coming next? Aliens, maybe? Maybe aliens. <laughs> maybe some uh, big animals that may be small and cute. Elephants in elephants. small. Elephants and bears, maybe. You're selling a collection here called Sturmund Twang. Does it have anything to do with uh, the Sturmund Drang movement? It is a reference to that, yeah, yeah, yeah. It doesn't have anything to do with it, literally, but you know. It's, uh, so it just sounded cool. It's a pun, yeah, yeah, it's a pun. No, but it is full of a uh, bit of autobiographical comics and a bit of a uh, bit of horror comics and a bit of everything, I suppose, yeah. A collection of everything, basically. No, not everything, but, you know. Uh, yeah, a bit of both. Yeah. And it's uh, some old, a lot of older comics that I've uh, redrawn in modern, I mean, in my new style or whatever. So it's, uh, yeah, some of it's really old, like from 2008, and some of it's new, like this year or last year. You have a printer, Eat the Rich. Is it because they taste better because they eat better? I mean, I think probably. I feel like they eat most of the... <laughs> I feel like they consume most of the Earth's resources, so I, presumably they're, they're better tasting. <laughs> yeah, don't eat the poor, they taste horrible. Yeah, yeah probably. I feel like it's gonna be... <laughs> they haven't been fed the same sort of... been able to, like, uh, what's it called? Uh, take up as much resources. So, um, presumably worse tasting and also, like, from an ethical standpoint, it's better to eat the rich. I feel like it's akin to being vegan. It's like, <laughs> consume this, it's more ethical. <laughs> I think I might have misinterpreted the message a little bit. <laughs> and there you have it. That was a quick look at the Stockholm International Comic Book Festival 2023. I hope you found it interesting. Like and subscribe and also check out this video if you want to see even more geeky stuff. It's gonna be good. I guarantee it. No, I don't guarantee it, but still, check it out.